Hi, chem students, and welcome to your second video over measurement in chemistry. Please have out your notes and something to write with. In this video, I'm going to cover measurement vocabulary and something called significant figures. You're going to end up with a love-hate relationship of significant figures, especially in the beginning of this course, you're going to hate them. It's totally natural to completely hate them, but as the class continues, you're going to love them because you're going to realize it makes your life so much easier, but it's going to take a while for us to get there. Let's go ahead and start. Okay, so some of the vocabulary I need you to know are the differences between precision and accuracy. So precision is how close the measurement is to other values in a set of repeated measurements. Accuracy is how close the measurement is to the true value or the correct answer. Okay, so I'm going to use bullseyes in order to give an analogy or an example of what precision and accuracy are. So in this first one, if you were throwing darts and this is what your dartboard looked like, and you got your three darts here in this little cluster, you would be very precise but not very accurate. Because as we know, we should be aiming for the center here. So you're not accurate because you're not hitting where you want to, but you're very precise because all of your throws are close together. In the middle one here, we would say that this person's very accurate. So they accurately hit the bullseye area, but it's not very precise because they're not really close together. And then our last one, this is perfect. We would say it's accurate and precise because it's both close together and in the region that we want it to be in. Okay, so here are some more examples of precision versus accuracy, and it'll more closely relate to what we're going to see in chemistry this year. So here are examples. Let's say the true volume of the sample of water is 33.3 milliliters. The measurements made are 22.4, 22.2, 22.4, and 22.3. Are these measurements that are made accurate, precise, both, or neither? Well, if you analyze these, I would say they're close to each other, but not very close to the true value. So they are precise, but they are not accurate. Okay, our second example. The true length of copper wire is 58.5 centimeters. The measurements made 58.4, 58.5, 58.5, 58.4. Go ahead and write down what you think this would be. Okay, hopefully you wrote down precise and accurate. So it is both. They are close to each other, and they are also close to the true value. So they're both precise and accurate. Here's our last scenario. The true mass of a sample of zinc is 14.5 grams. The measurements that are made are 13.2, 15.6, 17.9, and 12 grams. Do you think this is accurate, precise, both, or neither? So write down your answer before you hear the correct one. Okay, so the correct answer is neither. So these measurements are completely random. They're not close to each other, and they're not really close to the true value. So we would just say that these are absolutely terrible. They're neither precise or accurate. So you would need to redo this because your measurements are not showing any value. Okay, some more measurement vocabulary, qualitative versus quantitative. So I want you to think of what the words sound like, qualitative. It describes the quality of something, and it does not involve numbers. So how do you do that? You would give perhaps the color, the smell, or the shape. Those are qualitative ways to describe something. Quantitatively describing something includes a numerical measurement or quantity. So some examples of that is volume, mass, and temperature. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to significant figures. Yay, your favorite future thing! Okay, so it says scientific measurements are limited by the degree of exactness or precision that the measuring instrument gives us. The digits we obtain in our measurements are called significant figures. So something I want to emphasize right here is that significant figures only exist if you're measuring something with a measuring instrument. If you are counting something, they don't exist. It's only if you're measuring something with like a ruler or a graduated cylinder or a piece of equipment that significant figures exist. Now, 
To measure with precision, we're going to follow these steps. Number one, we're going to determine the interval that the instrument you are using increases by. An interval is the distance between one mark and the next on a scale or graph. So what is this increasing by? Number two, we're going to record the measurement of your sample by reading the smallest interval on the scale and estimating one more digit in your measurement. Record what you know plus one more. We call this reading between the lines. Okay, so let me show you an example of that. We're going to measure this kernel of corn using this ruler here. So first, it's asking us for the interval on the ruler. So what is the ruler increasing by? Well, from here to here, that's a centimeter, but I've got all these little tick marks. So that's actually what's increasing by, the smallest division or distance that is marked on the measuring device. So each one of these is 0.1 centimeters. So how do I know that? Well, from here to here, that's one centimeter, and then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spaces. Okay, so one divided by ten gives me 0.1. So each of these are worth 0.1. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so what is the length of our piece of corn? Well, I'll draw a little dotted line here. And it's falling between one and the next little tick mark. So it's between one and 1.1. So I'm going to say that this is about 1.05 centimeters. So notice our instruction said to estimate one extra digit. So because our ruler is increasing by a tenth's place, we want to estimate a hundredth place to be as precise as possible about our measurement. If this was exactly at one centimeter, I would need to record 1.00 centimeters to show the precision of our device. Okay, the number of significant figures in our measurement is three. So that's how many digits we use in order to record the length of our kernel of corn. And I'll elaborate on this a little more in a second. So more precise instruments give us more significant figures. Using the rulers below, measure the length of the pencil. So I've got two different rulers. The pencil is the same length, but we're going to compare them. So using this ruler, my interval is only by one centimeter. So I'm going to estimate the tenths place on this particular measurement. So the length of the pencil, it's a little bit more than two, so I'm going to say it's 2.7 centimeters. So the tenths place is estimated. There's no way for me to see that this is exactly 0.7. It's just my best guess. It's an estimate. So it's going to have some error in that very last digit since it's estimated by me. So the number of sig figs is two in this particular measurement. Looking at ruler B, the interval on the ruler is much smaller. The interval is actually 0.1 centimeters. So since I'm certain of the tenths place, I'm going to estimate the hundredths place. That's where my human error or degree of uncertainty will be is in the hundredths place. So I'm looking, I want to say I'm certain that's 2.5 0.6, it looks like it's between 0.7 and 0.8 to me, so I'm going to write 2.75. So this very last digit is my estimated digit, and this number um, or measurement has three significant figures. So remember, more precise instruments give us more significant figures. So based on the results, which ruler is more precise? Ruler B. Hence, it's given us more significant figures. So hopefully this is making sense to you that a more precise instrument is going to give you more sig figs. And okay, so next I'm going to give you our rules for counting significant figures in a measurement. Our biggest question here is when do zeros count and when do they not count? So just follow along. And then when we do some examples, I will help you understand this a little bit better. So first of all, number one, non-zero digits and zeros between non-zero digits are always significant. So 
all of these digits are significant. That would be three significant figures. This one would have two. This one would have three, and this one would have three. So these last two, I would say this middle zero is something I call a sandwiched zero. It does count and it is significant because it's between two real numbers. Number two, leading zeros are not significant. So leading zeros are zeros in front of our first real number. So the five here is our first real number. Zeros in front of that are not significant, so all of these numbers have one significant figure. Zeros to the right of all non-zero digits are only significant if a decimal point is shown. So I'm looking at my first one here, and I'm going to start counting at the nine because this is a leading zero. It doesn't count because my number does have a decimal. Everything after the nine count so this is three significant figures okay and the next number i'm going to start counting at the two there is a decimal so everything after the two counts five significant figures on this next one i'm going to start counting at the two there is a decimal somewhere in the number so everything after the two counts six significant figures and in this last one i'm going to start counting at the five this time there's no decimal, so these zeros afterwards do not count. This is one significant figure. So this number does not have a lot of precision. Whatever device was being used to measure this as 5,000 was not very precise, and I can only be certain of the five. So one significant figure. So for values written in scientific notation, this is our fourth and very last rule, Digits in the coefficient, meaning the big number in front, are all significant. So the numbers in front of the times 10 are significant. I'm going to put a little star next to this rule because even though it's the easiest one, it is the most forgotten one. So these are four numbers, four significant figures. Two numbers, two significant figures. You don't even have to look at the times 10 in order to know how many digits are significant here. Okay, so this concludes our lesson for today. Look to your teacher for your next activity and your next practice. Please ask any questions that you have. Learning comes from asking really good questions, and in chemistry, you're going to have a lot of them, so get used to it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.